Okay, first of all, Peter, how can we use what we've learnt over the centenary that we're celebrating at the moment to prepare for the future? So, what we're trying to understand from the past, the centenary that we're now celebrating, I think a, a number of very important things. I mean, first of all, if we go back to the origins of the CIPD, the Welfare Workers Association, it did what it said on the tin. I mean, they were focused on the no notion of well-being, particularly physical well-being, the factory workers, recognizing a well worker was likely to be a more productive worker. I think we can see many echoes in one of the big uh, challenges and trends of modern thinking, which is about how do we embrace this notion of well-being, it's linked into engagement and all sorts of things. But well-being in an even broader sense is not just about physical well-being, but it's about mental and emotional well-being, and about this notion of the, the employee, if you will, as a whole being, and not just somebody who turns up at work and goes home at the end of the day. So I think we've got those sorts of parallels, and many other things, of course. I mean, we have, over the hundred years, built an extraordinary ecosystem and presence in the, in the world of HR, recognized for our independence, our objectivity, our standards, our benchmarks, and so on and a huge amount of goodwill, and that is a platform, it's an enormous platform for us to grow from for the future. Worth constantly hearing about crises of corporate culture in the news, how can you prepare HR for a role in tackling this? Yeah, the, the issues of the crisis of confidence and the crisis of trust are really quite disturbingly pervasive. There are many different institutions, sectors, organisations where you know, we seem to be uncovering almost on a daily basis you know, the questions of ethical and moral behaviours. And indeed, you know, there is a higher expectation, I think particularly with the younger generation, about what is you know, morally and ethically right, and recognising the role of organisations of all shapes and sizes in the communities which they serve. So it, there is a very, I think, um, uh, important agenda around how do we improve uh, trust, how do we build confidence in organisations, how do we build the right cultures, and this is very much on the strategic, not only the strategic business agenda, but it's on the agenda for politicians and regulators and all sorts, and we've just recently published uh, a, a survey and report around restoring trust in the city. It's interesting to note that today as we're doing this recording, the Banking Commission came out with some of its findings and we've responded to that to say, great, you know, important emphasis on regulatory matters, and whilst they touch on issues of culture and behaviour, we don't think they do it enough, because you can never build sustainable organisations with the right cultures and get over these you know, issues of behaviour unless you, you really do understand what is the nature of, of the culture today and how do we change it. And in all of that, HR has a very, very profound and important role to play, all the way from understanding what culture is to understanding what the culture is inside your organisation today and how to shape it and, and change it for the future and how to also hold up that mirror to the organisation and to executive leadership where that cultural behaviours are not right, they're not in line with the values. So those are very, very critical agenda items I think for HR today and certainly for the long term. We're looking at a massive rate of change in the way people work now, aren't we? How are you preparing HR to be, to be agile to, to help um, drive those changes mm -hmm. and support people in those changes at work? Yes, yeah, so I've commented uh, I think, uh, quite a lot in the past about the pace of change. I find it very invigorating. I mean, obviously change can be challenging as well, but I think it is a time of great opportunity. Uh, I've talked quite a lot about new normals, so the idea of what we're looking at today is not just some historical blip and then we're going to go back to what we all did before, whether it's on the economy or anything else, that, that we are seeing very profound shifts in the nature of economies, the nature of work, the nature of workforce, and the nature of workplace. And these are, are, are trends that have been growing steadily over, over recent years. I think the global financial crisis has accelerated some of these changes, and certainly, you know, if you use the analogy of the dropping water, that the rocks have started to appear. And these issues of anything from you know, what we talked about, corporate culture and trust, engagement, flexible working, all these sorts of ideas, I think are very much the new normals. And, and the opportunity, therefore, for the profession to embrace these, to help lead that change, and to understand the context of that change, and how to use that context effectively and positively for their organizations is extremely important. Um, but to, to the point, we also, therefore, as a profession, need to become more agile. We've got to embrace these changes, we've got to understand them. Um, and one example I often use in that context is technology. 
Technology is a massive driver of change. Technology has not always been one of those most comfortable uh, bedfellows of HR, if you will. Um, and I believe very profoundly it needs to be because so much of technology today, social media and the like, it is about the nature of how we work and learn and collaborate and share and all these sorts of things. And that's very much in our domain space. So in that sense, we've need, got to be more agile to embrace those sorts of ideas and to understand them. But also to recognize in doing that, we're not going to do it on our own. We need to collaborate with these other you know, supporting and enabling functions like IT, like finance and the whole world of analytics and understanding you know, the, the real data stuff of HR. And like marketing, who themselves are, are deeply trying to understand things like social media and technology, but themselves can also bring some of their expertise to understand the nature of, of organization, the nature of the different demographics of our workforce, and things like employee value propositions. So the agility of HR is crucial, and we, we have to keep pace with this stuff. But you know, to go back to my earlier point, recognize that this is a time of great opportunity, and I think it's some really exciting uh, changes and new normals which we can embrace. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you.